Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get pre-orders of all the upcoming Force of Will sets, as well as releases of previous sets after they come out. CCGprime.com, with over 100,000 Force of Will singles, as well as out-of-print boxes from the past, and TCG accessories. As well as FowlLibrary.com, a wonderful resource for deck lists, article discussions, and more. Check them out at FowlLibrary.com. As well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer member, Vite Raman. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey there, rulers, and Merry Christmas from us here at Ruler School. This is DMO73 bringing you the Merry Christmas present of the Loki discard tempo list. Now, this is just first draft. There's certainly some things that I think I would change moving forward to take it more competitively, but I'll talk about those as we get in. Overall, like I said, the whole idea of this deck is to get about a step ahead a step and a half ahead of your opponent tempo value wise and then just kind of like keep that distance as you grind out your opponent um so there's just you know using schmel to keep their hand at zero and always threatening that board wipe um you know using the the value of like keeping their stuff taps down with um the fairy of trickery and, and that kind of thing just never letting your opponent kind of get back up after you kind of shove them into the ground just a little bit you're not comboing out by any means but you're just kind of grinding your way there while you're ahead so obviously we're playing loki here the order of trickery uh and then flips over into order of trickery so that we can get that popping effect of either once on your turn and um, once on your opponent's turn your own thing or your opponent's thing um and obviously the force resonance of trickery one thing to note is that you really do want to try to get loki flipped as soon as possible the ability to pop an ordered card is very very good obviously if you're not playing against an ordered ruler it becomes less important, but in in the order mirrors, it, it's very super important. Uh, Resonator-wise, we're playing three copies of Volmol, a very excellent card. Um, the turn one, like, Energize Coin, Flip Volmol, Draw 3 is just insane for this, like, really glue, good blue opener, especially since you can then call Stone. Four copies of Fairy of Trickery to be able to tap your opponents down, and we have a J Ruler a lot, so she's typically only at one cost, so just a really good card overall because she flies. Two copies of Dracula. We were using this as the idea of like, it's something for us to be able to pop our um, own Loki when it's a Dracula and then get it back as a resonator. Overall, I think this kind of fell flat. Um, cool idea, but in practice, I think that there are things that we can do that's better. Dolly, um, similar kind of vein also to be able to help us turn on the stones, but I think that there are some things we can do to make stones less important. Um, but I think I'd, I don't think I'd cut Dolly. I, I just think that two is probably the right number here. It also gives you a nice little barrier order, which is really cool for the mirror. Um, the Loki mirror, right? Just flip over Dolly and then you like have this ordered um, Dolly that has barrier, which is really nice. Four copies of Garm held. Um, I think this goes down to three potentially. Uh, the, th the things that we're copying, I'll go over here in a second. Overall, right now, the tails aren't super insane, so I think three might be the right amount, but four is really nice, especially if you can draw one from that early turn Bomo and then just discard it, so then the other three are just permanently cheaper. So it's flavor preference. Uh, in terms of what we're copying, um, do keep in mind that you need to be able to reveal a different card for each time you play Garmheld. So we're playing two copies of Lovecraft, two copies of Malua, and then a single Rabbit Ninja, and a single Galileo. Uh, Lovecraft is great for being able to just shoot your opponent's face and kind of close out games really quickly. Malua is great for board wipes and hand refills, uh, as well as a little bit of incidental burn on your opponent. Um, Rabbit Ninja, just to be able to kind of swing through if you need to, and also can help you with, if you don't want to deal damage to your opponent and playing the grind game, this is nice to put two wind moons and then draw two cards as opposed to Ma'at, which will automatically kill itself. So sometimes it's a little bit of getting Rabbit Ninja instead. And then a single Galileo, um, mainly to just be able to have that like will advantage and also just give your guys flying is very, very nice if you need to swing through for lethal. Um, and then back into here, we're playing two copies of Fenrir. Fenrir's the goodest boy. It's nice to have some orders that we can quick cast in on our opponent's turn without needing Loki enters the game of gods. Um, and this guy does a lot of good stuff. He's a good value trade in a lot of different ways. Um, very good card. And then the heavy hitter of the deck is Schmel. This card is absolutely insane. I think it's probably Loki's best card. 
Um, it is a threat, just constantly. One drop, 13, 13 most of the time. Uh, this negative neg 10, neg 10 when you need it uh, forces your opponent to discard two cards. And even if they use a, like a feed sting on it, you still stole a card out of your opponent's hand. Like it, and he's just a big old beater on a stick. You know, 13, 13's a lot of stat line. A great card. Three copies of Phantasmal Scarlet. We were playing this so that we had a way to deal with the early Mistletane. Um, like to just pop it. Overall, I'm not sure sold on this card. I think we might actually go to Loki's Curse. The idea being that, you know, if they're going to order into Mistletane, that's fine. We're just going to make it so Mistletane can never attack. Um, and then, like, we'll find a way around it. It does turn off our Loki, um, So, but which is a tricky situation. So maybe we play both. But for right now, I was maining this to deal with Odin. One copy of Roar of the Underground Giant for some nice little recycling. And we're not playing too many giants, so that's why we're only playing one. Three copies of Mermaid Thunder Parasol, because turn one spot removal is very, very important right now. Uh, four copies of Loki Enters the Game of Gods. This is going to be standard in every Loki build. This is a super solid card. Um, being able to do the tricks that gives stuff quick cast like you saw in the match with giving Schmel quick cast is nuts. Uh, three copies of Call of Darkness, because it's a plus one. <laughs> Pay one, search two. It's really, really good. Um, two copies of Loki's Deception. Just a couple. You don't need a ton, but like you can kind of hold on to it, and then it's just like really good when you, you need it. Otherwise, it just kind of sits there, and but that's okay because it's just a t couple copies. Um, one copy of Loki's Strategy. This card's getting cut. Um, I, I the amount of times, at least with the way that I'm building this, that I had a Tails Andy Villains out to make it only pay one um, was not relevant enough with the way the deck ended up playing so i wanted to try it out but I, I do think it gets cut in this version two copies of arena expansion utgard just so that if we you know can have something to search off of i think if we change the giant count and have more giants that don't have villains then this game probably go down to one um this card is great this card is an absolute house um, the fact that you can stack the triggers so that schmel makes the board neg 10 neg 10 and then this becomes a 2020, so it's still a 2020 is great. It's a really nice finisher. It pushes through for a lot of damage and closes out games really nicely. And then we have Skid Um Just playing one might bump it up to two uh, because of the ability to search for giants um, based on if we play more giants, um, giving stuff unblockable, uh, constantly getting back to your hand to continue keeping your hand advantage up. Loki does a really good job of keeping their hand full. Um, which is just things like Skid Blinear also really help to do that. So stone-wise, we're playing one Water Magic Stone. We were playing um, one Black Stone in the main, but I think that's going to shift to one Water. Um, one Ragnarok's Fiery Stone, which if you're playing competitively, you're probably not playing this, but at the casual level, it's totally fine. Um, four Magic Stone of the Tines, and then four Magic Stones of the Six Age, just because Loki really wants to be able to order on one any way possible, even if you're going first. So that is the deck. Hope you guys liked it. This is a ton of fun to play. I'm probably going to keep tooling around with it, even as we work on other decks for the channel. Um, cards to consider. Um, Hegel uh, with Loki um, Giants Advance it feels really good, especially to be able to like early lock out decks like Nyar Lithotep. You know, you call Resonator and just kind of lock them out um, because half that deck requires, like that entire deck just requires Resonators to work. So that's a thing. Um, and then like same with against like uh, playing it against um, Kaguya to call chance. So then like they can't, you know, find the way to lethal there. Some other cards, you Dark Sun, also a good card to be able to potentially pull in against um, Neuralithotep, just kind of things like that. I still do want to do a lot of testing with these rulers against uh, Saga Cluster stuff. Our locals is just all in on the new cluster because it's the new cards. So we'll have to see how that goes once people start experimenting. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Your thoughts on maybe a different take on Loki that you might have. I do think there's a lot of different ways you can build her. And it's very easy to build her um, wrong, necessarily. I just think she has a lot going on. And it's, she's going to be complicated to build. Like you see, these ratios are all over the place. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts. And uh, until next time, Merry Christmas. And this is DMO73 saying, class dismissed.